بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله as Imam Mukbil said رحمة الله عليه نرى وجوب تعاون مع أي مسلم في الحق that we believe that it is a necessity an obligation to cooperate with any Muslim regarding the truth in regards to the haq. So you must assist the haq. That is what Islam calls us to. And the Imam laid out uh, from his uh, books some important principles with regards to how uh, one can achieve this kind of cooperation. How can the Muslims begin to cooperate? One of the things the Imam mentioned is that that the people should not strive to do anything new with regards to the religion until after the ulama have studied the issue. So for example, new forms of dawah, new forms of, of, of means for dawah and this and that and the other, that people should not be eager to rush into that at, until after the ulama have studied those issues so that people should bring those questions, bring those issues, bring the background, bring the full result, uh, the full uh, information about new issues to the ulama, let them study it so that they can give a fatwa. So that way you're, you, you safeguard yourself from innovation in the religion. Another mention, another thing he mentioned, Rahmatullah regarding how to get this cooperation is that dawa is restricted by the methodology based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is another way that we can strengthen the cooperation between the Muslims. If all the Muslims uh, focus with these points, then this is how we can get cooperation. A third thing he, he mentioned, he said, Turkey's he said that the people that we should, if we want to get, gain this cooperation, that we should strive and give Akida, you know, creed, and beneficial knowledge regarding creed and beneficial knowledge in general, the utmost importance. So that it's ilm that's going to help us. The Prophet said, Whatever law is good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. The Prophet said, Whenever uh, if uh, whenever a person goes and traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. That's a path of Jannah. So of course that's a path of cooperation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us and orders us to cooperate. And cooperate all of you together in righteousness and taqwa and do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity and hatred. Another thing the Imam mentioned is that Adam al istighfaf bi talabat al ilm that the people should that we should restrain and cease from belittling the students of knowledge and the path of ilm. It should be, in fact, the opposite should be the case. The people should be raising up the students of knowledge, not raising them up by giving them honor and gifts necessarily, but respecting them, assisting them in seeking knowledge, assisting those students that are in need, so that way they can continue to seek knowledge and spread it to the community, and encourage our children to go on that path, not to belittle that path, say, no, you, we, we want you to be a scientist. We want you to be a doctor, we want you to be a lawyer. Those things are okay too. But Ilm al nafir and what the Ummah really, really needs is people who have a combination of those skills. Who have Ilm al nafir they have knowledge of the Sharia, and they're calling the Kitab al We don't have enough du'at. 
du'at that have knowledge and that are calling the Quran and Sunnah and the Fahim of the, the, fahim of the Salaf of this Ummah. We don't have enough of those people calling the Quran and Sunnah strictly uh, on the proper methodology. We have very few, uh, really, in, in many of the communities around the world. We need more. Another thing the Imam mentioned is that we have to leave off Tarqa Tahazim wa Tandimat Alati to Khalif Kitab Sunnah. He said that, that we should leave off his via, you know, calling into partisanship, calling to your group, calling to your clique, calling to your sect. And we should leave off organizing in a way which differs with the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's imperative to understand that. That Ibarra right there has so much wisdom. If this is an actual Ibarra of the Shaykh, this Ibarra anyway, it has a lot of wisdom because leaving off the partisanship and organizations which then it, 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 it designates what kind of organization we need to leave off. doesn't mean organizations. Are, some people say organizations are hisbiya. And this is a, a mistake. This is a big khata. This is a type of, in fact, a type of extremism if you say that organizations, this is hisbiya, have the adamant to hisbiya. Some of our brothers went into that kind of extremism. But we know, especially in the West, we know the reality is in order to give dawah and stuff, there has to be this cooperation and we benefit tremendously by organizations if you want to build a masjid. If you want to build a, a markaz, you know, a center for studying ilm. Or, or spreading dawah to the non-Muslims or whatever, we need organization. Organization is beneficial. So this is why when he said, Turka Tahazib Tandimat, Alati to Khalif Kitab Sunnah, those that that uh, differ with the Quran and the Sunnah. This is how I'm understanding this ibarah. Now if the Shaykh meant something else that this is completely haram, wallahu ta'ala alam. But leaving off those things which differ with the Quran and the Sunnah, that is what's uh, matloob. That's what we, we have to strive to do. The Imam also said one of the things <clears throat> in which he said was to have the wisdom. Whether a rajal munasib fi makan munasib. That we should put a person in place in his proper place. Meaning that if you have someone who has knowledge, but they don't have the ability to lead a community, you don't want that person in a place of leadership. Maybe the imam in your community is not the most knowledgeable, but he's the best leader. And he accepts advice from those people who have knowledge. Then this is what you want. You don't want someone who has knowledge, but they're weak in their leadership. Or someone who's weak in their leadership, or there's someone who, is, who has... Uh, leadership abilities, but they have no knowledge and they're not willing to accept from the people of knowledge. Then this is also a mistake. So everyone in their proper place. This will also help the Muslims to cooperate better. And as the Imam said, a da'wah should be on ikhlas. That we need to have da'wah based on sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also that we should not use our intellect and so forth to govern our da'wah, meaning that our da'wah is governed by kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf, and that of course you use wisdom and you use your intellect, but your intellect should not be the governing force over the Quran and the sunnah. And that we should have true al wala wal bara based on kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf, not based upon our desires and not based upon hizbiyya. And the Shaykh mentioned also that we should also purify our da'wah from bid'a, from innovation in the religion. And another thing the Imam mentioned, Rahmatullah <laughs> 
وتنا ونناس ونتناسع فيما اختلفنا فيه. This is very important. This goes against the qaida of Akhwana Muslimin. Akhwana Muslimin, they say we should cooperate in those things which we agree upon and excuse one another in where we differ. But the Imam here, he says we should, as Muslims, we should cooperate in those things which we agree upon and we should advise one another in those things where we disagree. So that we can't just leave each other and excuse one another, but rather it's on Ahmad Sunnah to advise the other people where they made the mistakes. And this, unfortunately, we see a lot of uh, uh, mistakes in this regard, that a lot of our brothers don't do this. They don't advise one another. They only quickly race to accuse one another of innovation and take them off the Sunnah to mess, uh, the, the Prophet Wasallam. And the last piece of advice the Imam mentioned in order to gain this cooperation is that we should not compromise our da'wah by doing sinfulness in order to achieve an Islamic means. That we have to avoid sinfulness and compromise that leads to sinfulness in order to achieve an Islamic aim. And we'll end there and we'll have one more sitting talking about ta'awun with some of the adillah from the shara that the Imam mentioned, Rahmatullah al And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.